the third of the three R's, of course, is ability with numbers. And again, it should develop in a natural sequence. One. Start by making counting part of your everyday life. Three, four, five. If they're in the kitchen eight, baking cookies, you seven. can teach them how to count with two teaspoons of, of uh, vanilla and two cups of flour. When you're cutting your pie at night, you would cut that into um, comp fraction parts. You would say, this is a half of the pie, this is a quarter of the pie. Then include sorting games, sorting colors, sorting laundry, and maybe a shape hunt. Can we find a circle? Yes, a stool. The shape of a stool is a circle. That's right. In order to create very young mathematical abilities, we want to both speak the numbers and show the numbers. For example, I could say to my two-year-old, you're now two. I'm speaking the number two, and I'm showing the number, the, the quantity, two. I would do activities that the child sees you do. I would involve them in activities like that. For example, setting the table. Can you bring me four knives? You know, we need... There's mummy, daddy, and you know, and you, and so we need three forks. To, to instead, let's set the table. So involve them in activities that you actually do, and speak about number in sort of in quantities, um, so that they're actually understanding the reason for, for actually working with number. You know, um, length and uh, breadth, all those kind of things one can bring into one's everyday discussions with children in natural surroundings when actually the time seems appropriate. Good nursery schools show youngsters how to identify quantities by handling rods marked off in bands from 1 to 10. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well done. That's why we've included a set of banded rods in our own program. So a child can soon learn that 10 is one bigger than 9, and 9 is one bigger than 8. And he can then see that 8 plus 2 equals 10, and 7 plus 3 equals 10. When infants, which very, when very young children are exposed to dots, the patterns are actually being set up at very early levels of brain development. And what you're going to find is that children are very quick, they're automatic, it's part of their culture, and we add then the oral language, the names to these dots, but in fact the patterns are already established in the brain. And it can happen at a very early age. We've therefore included in our program dot cards with written numerals on the back of each, along with a set of plastic counters. We've provided cards with plus, minus and division signs, so that your child can add dots and turn the cards over and add numbers, so that she can see instantly that five dots plus three dots equals eight, and that the numeral five plus the numeral three also equals eight. This is one of our fundamentals mathematics boards. And all you do to start using it is to take any number of our plastic counters. You throw the counters onto the board. Right. So, four and two makes... Yeah, six, that's right. So, suppose it's three. So, three and three makes... Six. Yes, well done. Good. The other side of the board has four squares. And by putting, say, three counters in each square, it's easy to see how four threes equals 12, and equally that 12 divided by four equals three in each square. The Fundamentals program includes both mathematics sets and lots of math games. Here's just a fraction of the ideas you'll find. Now, you put your Always make numbers a concrete experience, so weigh lots of things. So does that mean penguins are heaviest? <laughs> Is that what you said? You Measure lots of hand. things. Like this. Then we go, ooh, and then might move your hand out of the way then. Now join it up around the bottom here. Now then, let's get the tape measure out and see how much your hand measures, shall we? Right now, then we need to start it. Do it at the tip of this finger here. That's it. Right at the tip, Jonathan. That's it. And then to there. So what's that? 13. And a half. Well, how many have we got? Here, a Five. simple bowl right. and some counters. You're going to start then. Turns Try into a them in. mathematics game. That's it. And the other one. 
Right, so you've got two in the bowl, but how many are out of the bowl? Three. So what do three and two make? Five. That's it. The stopwatch is a wonderful counting toy. Ready? And of course it starts to make Ready? time real. Go! A simple pack of playing cards two. makes a great maths game. Now, who's the winner, do you think? Me. How do you know? Five, six, seven. That's right. So if you were to add your two together, what would you have? Seventeen. Seventeen? What, what have I got? Eight, eight. So you're definitely the winner, aren't you? And this is target practice. Ten and seven. So what's ten plus seven? Seventeen. Brilliant. We've got seven plus ten. ten. Seventeen. Seventeen. <laughs> Easy, isn't it? To teach multiplication, we've come up with an equally simple idea. This game works on the simple principle that by drawing two vertical lines and then two horizontal lines and putting a circle where each of the lines crosses each other, it's easy to prove and see that 2 times 2 equals 4. And by drawing another line and circling where they cross, it's equally easy to see that 3 times 2 equals 6. So we've turned that principle into our magic L game. So, OK. And it's magic because you, you have... How many is there? Two. Right? And 2... 2 and 2 is... 4. Good boy. And if you have... Two and two and two, it makes six. Good. So two times three is six. But we can't restress strongly enough that in mathematics, all the real life experience has to come first. And the more fun you make it, the better. Five, Animal six, adding is a great idea, for example. If we add those to the legs of a bird, do you want to draw the legs in? Yeah. How many legs has a bird got? Two. That's right. If we add them to the legs of the spider, how many have we got? How many legs are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's right. Are you going to write that in? Ten. That's the secret. Keep it fun. But remember, your objective is a rounded child, and the three R's are just the start.